An absolutely insane day of free agency signings that continues even live on today's show. Don't miss a minute as we break down the biggest signings, the fantasy implications, and pretty much go crazy with you. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's Tuesday, March 12th. We're the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the show. The cardboard bear you see is not Jason Moore. He is not with us. Too Wait. much free agency. Too much. Uh, he he decided uh, he just wasn't ready to talk about it. That's right. He just wanted to tweet about Justin Fields. <laughs> and then I, be, uh, you know, subbed in for by a big bear. I did see you guys talking because I see everything right now. I am plugged in. I am, I, I am Neo right now, man. I was unsafe driving yesterday. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I, I was. Uh, allegedly. I, we allegedly. Were, we were, uh, we knew. This is we not the place to proclaim your crimes. I I don't know if I committed any crimes. I mean, is that a crime? To come down a mountain traveling with your children, checking Twitter? Um, Some would say. Some would say it's not. Some would, those being the police, but, you know, if, if. If someone did that. If it's on a mount and I'm just refreshing it, mm. I'm not, I don't have it I in my know. hand. I don't have it in my hand. That's, do you I, know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's what it was. I mean, I, I was. You did it as safe as you possibly could. My car's got, you know, <laughs> got some automation for moments like this. Uh, But no, it, look, this is the show you all want to hear. And we did not record it yesterday because we knew, we knew that that would, shortchange everybody be which we've done that before and you're like man it's gonna be great and you get to the show you're like two people have signed a contract yesterday and even this morning pure pandemonium it is fabulous frenzy of frenzies yeah it's great absolute madness i mean they, it's not an understatement to say like if you weren't a part of yesterday, you legit don't know who's playing for who. I mean, there there are so many changing teams, changing faces, uh, situ and and huge implications. Like we're gonna go through it all on today's show. Mike and I are gonna break it down. Our raw reactions to these to these moves, and uh, I will say this at the top: like you don't have to have it all figured out like today on March twelfth in terms of how every single backfield is going to play out guaranteed we do, we're not even to the draft yet there's more free agents that news may break in the middle of today's show i mean i'm driving into work this morning and the joe mixon news breaks i'm sitting in my seat to hit record and darnell you mean the, the second part yeah the second part of the nixon because joe mixon already had news yesterday darnell mooney found a new team while we were getting ready to hit record so there will be more news and there will be more players drafted and we will have a better picture so we'll give you our reactions today. We'll let you know what happened if you didn't pay attention to Twitter every four seconds yesterday. Congratulations for your mental health. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, It was not like – like our family has spring break with the kids, so we decided to take one extra day on the weekend knowing we recorded this morning. That was just not – it was not <laughs> the right decision. Because I woke up yesterday going, this is just such a huge day for fantasy. That's all I was paying attention to. I told you I was in the matrix yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I I don't blame you. I mean, it was it was crazy, um, but our team is all over it. We've got the ultimate draft kit, the the dynasty pass. The updates have been constant, and they will continue to be. Free agency is tons of fun. I mean, this is this is the musical chairs at running back. I do laugh at it because there are there are several situations now, Mike, where. I, I don't think that these were I think they're neutral. Like like yes. you lose one guy and you get another guy and I think it's the same thing. 
but different names, right? Yeah. Well, the the NFC North in particular is uh, it reminds me a lot of you know like the high school relationships <laughs> where where one couple breaks up and then like they get back that, at the other one. Well, no, it's like that dude's best friend. Now he's dating the ex. Oh or yeah, this, this yeah, this the friend group. They best, all date each other. Yeah. yeah, and you're just like, no, this it's this is totally normal. This is what we do. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Okay. So uh, the Dynasty Pass, part of the UDK Plus, go to ultimatedraftkit.com to pick that up. You can get the mobile app and uh, stay up to date with the news, stay up to date with what's happening in free agency, all the Dynasty rankings. Uh, I even got a little bit thirsty with all the Twitter news, and I started firing out Dynasty trade offers all weekend. Like, it's getting me in the mood, Mike. I the get mood it. to trade. No takers, though. No, you haven't found one yet? No, and you won't reply to mine. So uh, you're just I leaving. Looked, I told you I was busy. Yeah, for two um, weeks. Two weeks is too long. I was to not respond to a trade. I was. Uh, that's my do, bad. D- Deucer's alley. No, I agree. Deucer's alley. Two weeks too yeah. long. Yeah, two weeks is too long. All right, just saying. I it probably expired by now. I don't know. I don't know if I resent it, but you um, did here. I got you declined. Yeah. yeah th- thanks. <laughs> that's see. That's not okay. Yeah. The, the don't fan- push me. The fantasy hitman has rejected the trade. You are. Give you the, give you more time. You needed more time. Free. That sucks so bad. <laughs> Fine. All right. Um, anything else at the top here, Brooks, before we jump into all this free agency madness? Let's go. Free agent frenzy. We don't have a... a big agenda for today's show other than to talk about everything we can talk about and then there'll be another show later this week where we'll talk about more of it just reacting but i i forced the crew to move the running backs to the top of the list today so we're going to start there running backs i will say okay um just judging by the actions of yesterday and today and cuz that's what we say you know part of the fantasy football process is Careful what the what the talking snakes will say with their mouth. Look at their actions. See what they are doing. And yesterday was running backs. Running like it, I think the first news out the gate was running backs, and then like that became the story of the day. To me, saying the these teams are not seeing a lot of true backup plans in the NFL draft. Of looking at the running back crew that's coming in, like no, we would rather give. Some of these players, a contract we that last year we would not have given That's, these players, and yeah. the wide receivers are slower to get. They're, they're going to get their money, but it's it's slower because there's a lot of options in the draft. I completely agree. We said it on the show a couple of weeks ago. We thought that this might be the case. There's there's four or five running backs in the NFL draft. We don't know which one's going to go first. We don't know whether even a, a running back will go in the first two rounds. It's probably not going to happen. Right. And so you have you have value out there on the on the free agent market, and you've you've got big names like Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs who have been already franchise tagged and have done the dance. So let's start with Saquon. That's the biggest news of the day. Saquon yes. Barkley. Boy, I thought they were going to make a splash. I just thought it was going to be Derrick Henry, but the Philadelphia Eagles go all in on Saquon Barkley, three years, thirty-seven point seven five million, could be worth up to forty-six million. 26 guaranteed. He's 27 years old. Here we go. I think the the first reaction is Saquon behind an offensive line. What would that be like? Yeah, it's going to be fun from uh, Pro Football Focus's 30th ranked run blocking unit last year to the third. Now, of course, that offensive line does lose Jason Kelsey, but that it has been something that the Philadelphia Eagles have been able to figure out, uh, you know, at least in recent memory, that when you think of the Eagles, you think of a strong offensive line, and you think of DeAndre Swift's success. Where you know, we'll talk about Swift in a little bit because he got himself a bag of money too. But it was when you would watch Swift versus uh, Kenneth Gainwell, it was because Swift was fast. Like they, the Eagles could create a truly sizable lane to run through. And Swift was fast enough to get to it. And I think that's what they are really hoping, that Saquon Barkley still has the juice. And, of course, he's a three-down running back, which uh, there was a report floated out there like, 
this was shocking for the Eagles to spend this much at the running back position, but you know, saying, "Hey, we're looking for." It would be nice to have someone like LaShawn McCoy, who we had years and years and years ago, to be a true three-down running back. And at thirty-seven point seven five million dollars, uh, twenty-six fully guaranteed, this dude better be a three-down running back. And I I know that the Giants fans out there, I mean it, it it's just. <laughs> You, you all need to calm down. It, what are people doing? How can you be mad at Saquon Barkley? I, I'm not mad. No, that's not. I'm the, saying the Giants fans. Well, that's silly. But the, the, the problem they is. They didn't give him the money. Right. You had a whole year. But what would you pay to not have the Eagles have Barkley? <laughs> that's the funny part to me. Is like, okay, let's say Saquon, you didn't want. You, you set a cap. You didn't want to spend more than, you know, 21 guaranteed. Well, is five more million dollars worth your opponent in your division that you're fighting with to not have this guy? I'm guessing it would have been a lot more than five. Yeah, I mean, maybe. To, but the but, way that they treated him, at the the way that it's, he feels he was treated, combined with the opportunity to win, like it's gonna, and the opportunity you got to pay the loser to tax. stick it to their his old team. So, yeah. uh, Saquon, this is an upgrade for Saquon Barkley. People will be concerned about touchdown numbers due to the fact of the tush push. It was the first thing I thought of. Uh, it will it will impact his opportunities on the goal line. But, I mean, look, he didn't score in New York. New York was not on the goal line very often. Saquon was not giving you a ton of fantasy value on multi-touchdown games in New York. I mean, last year he had six touchdowns on the ground. You're telling me he's not going to score six times in Philadelphia? He will, for I, sure. I'm gonna, I'll take the over. And the Swift plays you're talking about, like part of it that was comedic because we didn't know how much credit to give to DeAndre Swift yep. because he'd, he'd gained six yards before he was touched. I think it was decisiveness as much as it was speed. Like Saquon is a, has good vision, right? And Swift showed good vision in that offense. If I have Saquon Barkley in a dynasty league, if I have him oh, yeah. you know, in a keeper league, I'm, I'm enthusiastic. Yeah, I had a chance last year to – I mean, it would have, you know, paid the tax the, the, to get Saquon Barkley. And part of the concern of why I didn't go for that trade was I'm like, where, where is he going to end up last or next year? Because of all the teams. Could have been a commander. Yeah. You could have been, you know. It could have been a really terrible situation, but you won the, uh, you won the fantasy lottery this, uh, just this year. Yeah. And it, it makes it fun for dynasty trades that happened before the free agent period too. When you, when you gamble, um, and all of the emotions you go through. So, goodbye, New York. Hello, Philly. Yep. And uh, they have themselves, you know, they're a high-scoring offense. The Giants have been 30th, 15th, 31st, 31st, 18th, and 16th. Barkley is in – I'm not going to say he's like – like he, he is in the category now of running backs that could end up one. Yeah. yeah in, in fantasy finish. Yeah. He couldn't have done that in New York. Yeah, I mean, just the initial reaction. It's like, yeah, Saquon's easily a top-five running back. Uh, Josh Jacobs, this was one of the shockers of the day, and it continued to unravel. But we were waiting for the shoe to drop on Josh Jacobs. I thought he might go to Chicago. They made a different splash at the running back position in DeAndre Swift. We'll talk about it momentarily. Jacobs goes four years, $48 million to the Green Bay Packers. So just 26 years old. Some would have uh, some would remind you that he, they signed a four year, forty eight million dollar yep, deal. That was with, where I would go with Aaron Jones when he was twenty six. Oh, I, I and was then gonna... now Jacobs is four years, forty eight million at, at twenty six. But it's it's a four year, forty eight million dollar deal. That sounds fantastic. But the twelve and a half million guaranteed is very curious. Where Saquon twenty six fully guaranteed, DeAndre Swift fifteen guaranteed. Yes, the the Jacobs, the overall numbers, which w when you look at on paper, Jacobs got way more money than DeAndre Swift. Well, I mean, twice the amount of money. But, you know, Andrew Brandt tweeted out saying, just highlighting, the reported deal, four years, $48 million, when you really break down the deal, uh, one year, 14.8, and then three Packer option years, which puts the team full. It's, it's very strange to me that, as, as I think it's the, it's compounded by the DeAndre Swift deal. That Barkley, I, we expected him to get paid. He did it. Swift, 
I don't know that anyone expected him to get paid the way he did. And then for, for Josh Jacobs to get such a low guarantee is it, – it's strange to me. It, it, it is a little bit odd. It, I think it shows you that he wasn't worth what he thought he was after the inefficient year last year. It, he The franchise tag was what, $10.5 million last year? $10 million? Something like that, yeah. So fourteen million, uh, fourteen point eight is what the one year payout will be, and then the Packers have option year. So it's kind of like a uh, expanded franchise tag to a degree. Yeah, chance to renew your value, and the team immediately let go of Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, they tried to negotiate a new contract. He's twenty nine, so this is a this is a age reset at running back. AJ Dillon not going to be part of the picture, right? So did he sign yet? Did uh, do we have any AJ Dillon news? You know what? That the the big crowd of GMs did not gather for AJ. I've just made. We didn't miss it. We did not. I, we did not miss. I could have sworn we missed it. I don't know if we report USFL stuff. Hmm. All right, be on on that team team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, lock in AJ Dillon news. I, I got my S Dillon alert set. Thank you, thank oh, you. Yeah, because uh, thank you. Some dynasty managers need AJ Dillon to get a job. You need to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, probably not a big deal. So, Josh Jacobs, what do you what do you think? This offense very impressive. They're you know Jordan Love at the end of the year. Um, for a team, it's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, for a landing spot that no one saw coming, I thought there there was probably panic immediately. Yeah, because when, of when we shared backfield. Yes, yes. And then now Aaron Jones leaves and immediately signs a one year deal with the Vikings. So <laughs> so. So Aaron Jones, one year with the Vikings, but he's older. I look to me, in a one year window, Aaron Jones is a better running back than Josh Jacobs. I genuinely believe that. Jones was great last year. I think Aaron year. Jones, it when healthy, is the is a top six running back in football. Problem is he doesn't stay healthy. And you don't have very long yeah. for that. So um The Packers should really stick it to the Vikings and bring uh Madison in. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. That's the backup. Uh, so Aaron Jones, though, going to the Vikings, the Ty Chandler excitement, which I didn't have, by the way. I mean, I, d I did not believe that them letting go of Madison was a, was a big, enthusiastic pat on the butt to Ty Chandler, no matter what they said. Ty Chandler is little. He's a little dude. He's a 200-pound running back. So it the, makes sense that they would add somebody to the equation here. The, the Ty Chandler – excitement was this was the same as like the Tajay Spears excitement where it was at this very moment in time there is a path where this this dude is just the guy and in in talking about Ty Chandler but that path is not there anymore yeah I mean if, if you were excited about Ty Chandler where are you now uh the for Ty Chandler I mean it I think he is still a speedy backup and at least the way that Kevin O'Connell was was talking about him again be careful the way that coaches are talking but he O'Connell talked him up uh, a lot right before the Alexander Madison uh release so I, he I think he will be involved but this will be Aaron Jones show yeah yeah I, I agree so that was big news DeAndre Swift got a three-year 24 million dollar deal in Chicago 15 guaranteed they clearly identified the 25 year old DeAndre Swift as their target and just yeah he was the first splash they were going to overpay like Chicago had the money we were not going to be surprised I think that th this running back free agency let me let me see if you agree with me on this this is a cursory tale of low draft capital running backs that things change quickly and, yep. and what I'm saying is is like people Wanted to talk about uh, Tajay Spears and, and Tony Pollard signs in, in Tennessee. They wanted to talk about Ty Chandler and Aaron Jones arrives in Minnesota. They wanted to talk about Khalil Herbert all offseason last year, but doesn't have the draft capital or financial backing to be a guaranteed starter. And now he's one of four, where Swift is obviously the guy. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you, you gamble. If you think that those guys are going to – they have to really establish it. They have to be like – there is no debate with 10, 10 GMs in a room have would have to all agree that Khalil Herbert's the guy or Tajay Spears is the guy for this not to happen. Well, I think the the Roshan Johnson truthers, that's going to be who is bummed the most. 
Because that, like, if we had it in the next season with Chicago not really making a splash and it's, you know, Khalil Herbert versus Roshan again, I think most people would have been on the Roshan Johnson side, but that is not going to happen. I think it was J.J. Zacharyson that pointed out this morning, DeAndre Swift was a lion, now a bear. David right. Montgomery was a yes. bear, now a lion. Yeah. Aaron Jones was a Packer, now a Viking. Mm-hmm. So we're playing musical chairs in the division and just hoping it works out. But what did you what did you think about Swift's fit with the Bears and what they're planning on doing? I think everybody expects it to be Caleb Williams. Yeah, that's the the hard part is the the good probability bet for running back like when there's a rookie quarterback. Now I guess CJ Stroud happened and and uh, and it's gonna get a lot of people excited. But the bet for basically everyone on the team when there is a rookie quarterback is you have to lower your expectations. So that's that's probably where I'm going to go just because of that's the probability until I, I feel like there is a true seismic shift and not just a, an outlier here or there. Then I will be – Swift will be a running back too. And it'll, he'll have spike weeks because he's, he's very fast. He had – very few opportunities due to the tush push around the goal line. We are always joking about yeah. it. Scored five times in Philly. 47% of his yards came before contact in Philadelphia. He will not have that offensive line no, he will not. in Chicago. But he is just 25 years old. And so I think it will be interesting with the new offensive coordinator there, who obviously they identified Swift and said, look, they could have gone out and paid whatever. Could have paid for Jacobs. Could have Could have taken a shot at Saquon. They went younger and more explosive. But I don't know if we, I mean, workload-wise, who's going to share the time with him? Herbert? Roshan? Yeah, I, I think all three will play, but Swift. All right, let's take a quick break, come back with more running back news. Well, I said it a minute ago, the Titans... They were one of the early moves during the day yesterday. Tony Pollard, three-year deal worth $24 million. Some people were joking about the fact that this is the retirement home for early down backs uh, for, the, for Dallas because DeMarco Murray went over and finished his career out in Tennessee. They pay Pollard uh, $24 million over three years. What is the guarantee on that, Kyle? Do you have that? I'm looking it up. Okay. Uh, not a good year for Pollard last year. Nope. Not a good outlook for the offense in Tennessee, at least the way we look at it now. Mm -hmm. You fire your head coach, your weapons, there <laughs> aren't a lot of them. Some people believe in Will Levis, but Tony Pollard is just taking the money, it seems like. This is where the most money was going to be. Yeah, money, and, and there should be opportunity. I, I would not – I'm not – you were going to say, you, here's what you are going to say. You were going to say, I'm not going to bury Tajay Spears. Yes, because yeah, I think Spears is a good player. The problem is, is if this is a bottom five offense in football, which has every chance to be, or at least let's call it bottom third. That's fine. And you break up scoring opportunities across two undersized backs. Yeah, little, I'm little not. concerning. I'm, well, I'm not excited. <laughs> I, I don't think either of these guys, the, the path of us ending this season with like, oh, man, Tony Pollard, or, whoa, what did Tajay Spears? It seems like it's out of nowhere. I feel like that's just – that's really low, low odds. Yeah, and um, I believe there was some talk about dynasty trades of Tajay Spears and what you would do a few weeks ago, and the advice was kind of get rid of him while the iron is hot. Like, trade him while people assume he could be the guy. So hopefully that's what you did. If not, hopefully – in your case, you think Pollard is kind of washed and doesn't resume uh, a solid career and, and Spears gets more opportunities. But this is not a running back room I'm excited about. We're not. So we can't find the guaranteed for Tony Pollard. It's not being reported, huh? Yeah, their reporters That's are still trying to find it. <laughs> um, Three-year huh. three year deal, $24 million. I bet you, uh, it's, I bet not, you it's 11 It's not going to be good. It, I mean, just the, the – Seven. The, the, uh, six. <laughs> Stop! Stop me. The 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 Josh Jacobs guarantee took, in terms of you know like 
usually the guarantee comes out immediately or right after. The Josh Jacobs one took some time yesterday too. Yeah, and, and then it when it came out, you went, "Oh, that's much lower than I thought." It's a good reminder, right, to not let the first headline hit oh, you yeah. too hard. Yeah, very few players ever see the top end of that money. So the Commanders made a decision to let go of Antonio Gibson and bring in Austin Eckler on a two-year deal worth just eight point four million dollars. Yeah. He's twenty. Eight. He'll be 29. He'll be 29, which is what? That's the same age that Aaron Jones is, right? Yeah. And the one-year deal for Jones at 29 was up to $7 million. There's a two-year deal worth 8.4. It was a lost year in many ways for Austin Eckler. Brian Robinson, he's, he's going to be a big part of this offense with Cliff Kingsbury. Eckler will handle third downs and probably – Spell Robinson. Is that how you see it? Yeah, that that is how I see it. The 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 hope still for Brian Robinson is that Cliff Kingsbury is the offensive coordinator, and we know very well firsthand when Cliff was in Arizona. Once they get you know close to the goal line, his favorite play of all time was run the ball up the middle, and if it doesn't work, the next play we should run the ball up the middle. Oh yeah, go back up the middle. And we will get there. We will get there eventually. So yeah, uh, if we go uh, yeah, run up, up the middle. Yeah, yeah. Because that's middle. that's where the action is at. So I still think that there's huge uh touchdown upside for Robinson, but I think Robinson's but, but, a better player right now than Austin Eckler. Yeah, yeah, I I wouldn't disagree with that. But the fact that Eckler like the the team can't have signed him saying we see we foresee a whole bunch of groundwork for Austin Eckler like he's he's still a good pass catcher like with with reliable hands usually uh over the back half of the year he had one gain of 10 plus yards on 77 attempts yeah he just and, and it was 10 yards the they're crossing their fingers hoping that was because of the ankle news this morning well let, let's go to the news we got yesterday first the Bengals signed Zach Moss Dude. to a two-year deal worth eight million dollars I love it by the way that's the same deal that Austin Eckler got two years, eight million. Moss is twenty six, and they re-signed Travion Williams. If you notice, and they were really proud of it. I mean, they put it up on their Twitter. Travion Williams coming back for a year I, six or whatever. I, the, the Travion Williams is so. I mean, you realize it's baffling. like year five or six for Travion yes. Williams. Yes, yeah, like he's almost fifty years old. I know, and he's I, still yet to do anything. I believe that he has never scored a touchdown. He must be the most charismatic. Yeah, funniest, Kyle just but yeah, he's never scored a touchdown. Funniest locker room guy. They were yeah. so proud of him. Um but the 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 announcement of the well, first it was the Bengals were going to cut Joe Mixon and then the signing of Zach Moss. It was like simultaneous. It was so cold-blooded by the Bengals of I don't I don't even know which one. Joe was Mixon first. should be happy they didn't do it last year. That was the rumor. And then he went out and he put up. Do you know? You want to know what he finished last year, Joe Mixon? Do you want yeah. you want a refresher? Sure. He's the RB. Yeah. G guess it. I want to hear. You. Uh, no, it. He. Let's see. RB nine. Five. Five. So he's gone. Offense is great. Zach Moss proved without John. Uh, I almost said uh, Jonathan Stewart, but Jonathan oh. Taylor, that he could get it done and. Bengals save money at running back. They said that they were going to cut Joe Mixon, and then this morning we got news that, nope, the trade bait worked. Joe Mixon to the Houston Texans in a uh, in a trade, not a release and sign. And now the Texans have Joe Mixon. So if you're in Dynasty, Joe Mixon looked dead, uh, which I believe you have Joe Mixon, Brooksy. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. and how and are you feeling? I don't know. <laughs> So then, yeah, him and Pollard are my running backs. So, oh, yeah. Ooh. I guess not good. That's yeah, how. actually, I'm in your division. I feel great about that. Um, but it was, you know, just the hilarity of it with the, um, the Devin Singletary. That's the next bit of news. He signed with the Giants for a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money, uh, Devin Singletary. So you had this brief moment of time where it was, okay. Damian Pierce, Singletary didn't come back. What if? What if Damian Pierce can? Nope. We got Joe Mixon now. It's crazy. 
It's absolutely crazy. And yeah. so uh, Moss to the Bengals, Joe Mixon to the Texans. He's he's still 27 years old, and he's the only running back to yeah. finish top 12 for three straight years. So he's got an opportunity in Houston. Yeah. You saw Close. Singletary get it done. Is he better than Singletary? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. But the this is – people ask us all the time, when should I do a – a dynasty draft, a startup draft, because you're juiced up from the season. You you want to branch out into dynasty, and we tell people, look, if you want to do it now, it is very high risk, very high reward. But you could have if some people who, if they've never played dynasty before, who end up really, really upset because things over the next couple months are going to change in a way that just n nukes the value of some players. So this this is why we talk about that. Because if you had drafted last week. Yeah, talk about a different world. And no, we're not close to being done with running back. <laughs> Devin Singletary, who excelled in Houston. Three-year, $16.5 million deal with the Giants. Okay. Get that shmoney. Uh, yo, I'm I'm pumped for Singletary. Yeah, I mean, Get talk that about cash. this. He was not worth close to this amount of money before what happened last year. He was good. Now yep. he's going to the Giants. Okay. Any thoughts there? Uh, he should be the primary guy. I think. I think that he is a capable player. But was we'll, we'll, let's see what happens with the offensive line. Okay. <laughs> Gus Edwards, two-year deal with the Chargers. Thank you. This is the worst thing that could have possibly <laughs> happened. <laughs> Do you disagree with me on that? I think this is the I worst. Want, explain it. This explain is the worst, me. dirty, messy, running in the mud signing you could ever have because Gus is not enough to be your only guy at all in Los Angeles. But he is enough to ruin somebody. And if they go, if I mean, I think Blake Corum might as well get fitted for the jersey. I think Blake Corum. And Gus Edwards is going to be your backfield in Los Angeles. Greg Roman, Jim Harbaugh. They're going to tie Justin Herbert's hand behind his back and make him hand off with the left hand, and he's going to have zero passing attempts. Just so attempts. he doesn't think about throwing? No pass attempts this year. To me, Gus Edwards is just – people like him too much. He's not good enough to be your number one. He certainly isn't at 29 years old. He might have been at 26 when he was going to have a chance and got hurt. I, I just – he still has a career average of 5.2 yards per carry. Yeah, I know. And it was all fourth quarters in Baltimore. So, I, I don't know. You just, so, you feel like it's the worst case because I think he, of the trap? It's the worst case because nobody – I mean, you don't think he's a starter, right? No. Okay. So, now, now – No, but but if I have Gus Edwards on my dynasty team, I'm, I'm hoping yes, and wishing yes. and praying. Yes, if I have Gus <laughs> Edwards on my dynasty team – Instead of burning that roster spot, at least I have hope. Yeah. But to me, this is – they're the team. They're the team that's going to go draft a running back. Stay away from Trey Benson. That might be it, too. I, You know, they're going to take somebody. I, I wouldn't say to stay away. I mean, it's a good situation for a rookie coming in. I just feel yeah, like I, maybe, yeah. I would rather have a guaranteed knowledge that one of these guys is going to be the guy. I mean, you could say that you weren't afraid of, like, if Gus was still in Baltimore and they signed Derrick Henry, I guess you wouldn't have been afraid of Gus. No, I would not. But I'm more afraid of a rookie coming in and Gus just being, I mean, he was with Greg Roman in Baltimore. Yeah. So they like I can him. see that. Patriots, they signed Antonio Gibson on a three-year deal, base value of $11 million. Hmm. Ramondre's in his final year of his rookie deal. Ramondre's value when he was good was in the passing game. This is a problem. It's it is Antonio it's, Gibson will be taking passing downs. It's very messy because that's really the best part of Antonio Gibson's profile, and that's the best part of Ramondre's profile. So maybe maybe they just won't run. That'd be nice. Just yeah, throw it every single time. Not nice for Ramondre managers, right? Yeah, you don't want to see them. I mean, the, the the contract is not that big, so it's not that splashy. But Antonio Gibson is. Still, to me, a player that if the right scenario was around him, Aww. he could thrive. 
Oh, I still believe in the player. It's so cute. Still believe in the player. I know. When would that stop? Uh, never. Okay. I mean, does the, it stop for AJ Dillon? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. No, Antonio. So you Gibbs, can reach a point. Antonio gives what's funny. Uh, another funny part of this is, yeah, it's it's not it's not uh Uncle Bill. It's not his Patriots anymore. But we'll we'll see how much of the Patriots culture is will be continued on the ingrainment because you know who likes to fumble <laughs> Antonio Gibson. Yeah. Kind of his favorite. Well, Bill's not there, you know. But that that's what I mean. But if it's if it's still built in to the coaching staff of when a player fumbles, you get them off the field and you punish them. Oh, he's Gib- gonna have fun with Gibson. With, will never play. He'll have fun with Ramondre too, because I remember him <laughs> ruining my season two years ago with fumbles. Chase Edmonds one year return deal with the Bucks, so they didn't lie when they said they liked him. And then Naeem Hines getting a chance to come off of multiple catastrophic injuries with the Browns, a one year deal. Okay. Neither of those are very consequential, other than the Bucks, like. Rashad White, back with the quarterback he's used to. Seems like maybe we get to re-roll that. And it, honestly, the the Chase that's good news. The Chase Edmonds signing is great news at this point for Rashad White. Of the do we get to re-roll? Because if you get to re-roll last year's uh, running back depth chart, then Rashad White. I mean, you can. Uh, they kept saying they like Chase Edmonds, but they would never put him on the field. All right. Are we done with running backs for the moment? Any other news break in the meantime? I think we're good. Mm. Okay. Mm. Derrick Henry didn't sign? Mike has been pining over a Derrick Henry signing. If Derrick for quite Henry a doesn't while. sign with the Ravens, I'm going to die. Uh, okay. Can I pick let me pick a team? Let me pick a different team. There's only two teams where I end up thriving. The two teams you're happy are Dallas. Yes. And the team you just mentioned. That is correct. The Baltimore Ravens, who you've been looking to have sign him for a while. So let me let me really let me think if there's anybody else that could really sign him. Okay. Um not Arizona, not Seattle, not the Rams, not the 49ers. So you're good in the West. Panthers? No. Falcons? No. Saints? No. Buccaneers? No. I don't think so. No. It's not gonna be the Bears, not gonna be the Vikings, not gonna be the Packers, not gonna be the Lions. Okay, you're almost out of the NFC. Okay. Not not going to be the Commanders. No. Nope. Not going to be the Giants. Not going to be the Eagles. Not could be the Cowboys. So you got one NFC team that even makes sense. I'm just trying to calm your fears. I and everybody no, out I, there with Derrick Henry. I okay. I like it. Chargers. So far. They could do it. It's possible. Would you be unhappy? You'd be probably happy. I'd be okay with it. Yeah. Broncos. I would not be happy with that. I guess that's a possibility, but I doubt it. Raiders, that's a real possibility. Yeah. And then not the Chiefs. So in the AFC, you got the Chargers, Raiders, probably not the Broncos, not the Titans, not the Colts, not Jacksonville, not Houston, not Cincinnati, not Pittsburgh, Cleveland, you could keep them in contention. Probably not. They would have to cut Nick Chubb. Yeah, I don't think they're doing that. And then Baltimore. Buffalo? Just give them the money. Miami, New Just, York. We're we're already getting the reports that the, that the Ravens have offered. I think you're going to be happy, is what I'm saying. I think you're going to be. Okay. I need to be happy. You won't be happy if he's not good anymore, but you won't be unhappy with the team. I think that he's still capable. He's not what he once was. He's still capable. And if I'm Derrick Henry, I'm going somewhere I can win. That's like he, true. He already has cash. Reminds me of Stephen Jackson late career Atlanta. Well, don't say that. No, that's what you're getting. No. No, that's what you're no. not, you're not no, getting. No, I am not. I you're reject not, you're not getting your a, comparison. I don't think you're getting a dominator, man. I just need capable. I don't even think Baltimore. I don't think you should root for Baltimore. I think you should root for Dallas. That's fine. I'll take either. <laughs> Remember that play Tony Pollard couldn't score on when no one was in front of him and going into the end zone? That play would be there for Derrick Henry. Let's talk some quarterbacks. Quarterbacks. The Atlanta Falcons are giving quarterback, Cole's spokesman, Kirk Cousins, a four-year, $180 bazillion deal <laughs> that includes $100 bazillion guaranteed. He has made more money than almost anybody in the entire history of the National Football League. He has one functional Achilles. He is 35 years old. 
What other what other things can we say to scare Kyle, the Borgogan, <laughs> who is the biggest Atlanta Falcons this, fan on the planet, who doesn't know what to what to want? This signing is <laughs> is hilarious. Somewhere Arthur Smith is slamming his hand on a table yeah. because he went through absolute quarterback misery with Desmond Ritter, Taylor Heineke, and Kirk Cousins is the guy. And uh, look, the jig is up. I don't think if we call him uh, Jake Buckingham, I don't think it's going to matter. Drake London is going to be this year's Garrett oh, Wilson his, in the draft. His it's bags over. are packed. He's it's ready over. to go. Yeah, he's moving on up. Yeah, he is. Drake London is going to be the most popular pick because because he's a he great, should be he's a great player he's outstanding and he should theoretically have a good quarterback. I feel like my thoughts on Drake London were always built they were always built around the quarterback he has to throw him the football and that's what made him so inconsistent. But when he got the ball, he was great. So Kirk Cousins is abandoning Justin Jefferson and becoming best friends. With not just Drake London, but also B. John Robinson, Kyle Pitts. Yeah. What do you do? With, and what do you do with Kyle Pitts? Darnell Mooney, who has been added to this roster that looks stacked if Kirk Cousins is healthy. Uh, uh, what? Uh, oh no. Uh, Did it happen? Breaking news. Breaking news, Derek Henry is signing a two year deal with the Baltimore Ravens. Come on! Uh, it just happened. Oh, you have. Why do? Why does it sound like you're trying to digest food rather than be excited? Okay, I'm back. I'm invested in the show. How now. did that happen just now? <laughs> this is real. Two year. I just went through every team. It's a two year, sixteen million dollar deal worth up to twenty nine, fully guaranteed for the first year. We ride. <laughs> we ride, Henry Tribe. Oh, my gosh. 15 tutties. Well, I guess that one was on the wall. Whew. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. 15 tutties. Thank you. I really feel like I earned something today. Um, Derrick Henry, a Baltimore Raven. Interesting. Yes. If the Gus bus could produce the way he did. That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what the Gus bus was scoring, what, he had like multiple three touchdown games? It was ridiculous. Ain't no tush push in Baltimore. Nope. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Thank Mike you. is Mike is whew, he's with us. It was it was gonna be a big problem. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was trying I was trying to comfort you. There's no <laughs> NFC teams. You know you've been on my side. Where where you're looking down, you're like, what's my win probability? Ninety nine point nine percent. Not high enough. No, I get it. I need the Hundo. I get it. My dynasty team rejoiced with the Mike Evans signing this offseason. We all we're all rooting for certain things, which is longevity to the to the assets we have on our teams. We were talking about Kirk Cousins. Okay, yeah, back to this. Um, yeah, Drake London's going to be a top twelve draft of wide receiver. Uh, more than likely. If yeah. he's not, if 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 you don't believe that, I'll take him there. Drake London's going to be a monster. It's. I mean. It's I mean Jake Buckingham. It's it's up to Kirk and how healthy he is. Hundred and eighty million dollars with a hundred guaranteed tells me that team looked into it and they know he's he's gonna be fine. <laughs> Which ankle was it? His Pl plant leg. Uh, was it? I believe yeah, if Kyle it maybe you know, but cause cause him and Rogers tore opposite Achilles. I thought that Rogers was the plant leg. Was he? Yeah. That means Kirk's wasn't the plant leg. Well, we got we gotta dive in. But into now this. all I'm thinking about is a leg made of plants. <laughs> To be honest with this you. This is my plant leg. This is my plant leg. <laughs> plant man knows. Yeah. Tom uh, Brady somewhere is like, don't you dare. That's my joke. Oh, it was his right leg. Okay. But he's he's going to throw lefty, so it'll be fine. Oh, he's, yeah. he's going goofy? He's going goofy. <laughs> he's actually always been left-handed. <laughs> All right. Um, Kirk Cousins, big news. But let's talk about the absence of Kirk Cousins for Justin Jefferson because, you know. Absence? You mean uh, the replacement? Yeah, Sam Darnold. Samuel Darnold? Sam Darnold is, yeah. Sam Darnold's now a Viking. Viking fans this morning are rolling around <laughs> screaming, remembering the days of Ponder, right? Yeah. Pondering those days, really. 
Yeah, Sam yeah. Darnold, a one-year deal uh, worth up to $10 million. It's his uh, seventh year in the NFL. He's still – he will be turning 27. Where do they pick? Ooh, that's a good question. 11th. Yeah, okay, this so is they, J.J. McCarthy country. They say that it could be McCarthy territory. If I'm Justin Jefferson if, – if you're in a dynasty startup right now, Mike. Yeah. You taking Jefferson above CeeDee Lamb? <sighs> With the mystery? It, you just said, you know, after free agency, somebody scheduled their draft for today. Yeah. The, the, it's interesting of, you know, on the Dynasty podcast, you know, not jumping into it too deep because it's whatever, but it's the, how, did you have Jefferson number one or did you have Jamar Chase number one? And the most frequent argument for it, because it was like, I would rather have Justin Jefferson with Kirk Cousins. But the argument for Jamar Chase is, you know that he has Joe Burrow. That's, that is what the future is for Jamar Chase, and you had this impending doom of well, what if Kirk Cousins actually leaves Minnesota and there's no answer at the quarterback position. Jefferson will still be great, but it's a problem, man. With Sam Darnold coming in, which uh, I saw a you know a, a Warren Sharp tweet, he was just highlighting this of like how inaccurate. Sam Darnold has been over his entire career. And if you're putting you, hope in Sam you, Darnold, that is the dumbest thing you could ever do. This signing of Sam Darnold is an insurance policy to me on a rookie. The, Sam Darnold is not going to be the future of this team. It's a one year deal. I agree with that, but you, mean, you still have to deal with this year for, but I don't, for look, Justin Jefferson. That's what I'm saying. He's the same age as CeeDee Lamb. People think he's younger. He's not. They're 24. Jefferson and CeeDee mm. Lamb are both 24. And Jason pointed out yesterday when we were talking, like there was, there was, there have been many number one consensus picks in dynasties yes. that you look back, like Juju Smith-Schuster, uh, Michael Thomas, I, Michael Thomas, and I'm not saying like Jefferson is not great. I'm just saying it's like situation one in the what is it? Uh, bird in the hand. Bird in the hand. Yep. That it just makes it really, really scary. And we talked about Larry Fitzgerald's peak, one of the. Best wide receivers in the history of the NFL had a three-year span with bad quarterback play in Arizona. That yeah, wasn't good for fantasy. Yeah, and he was like an 800-yard guy. I want, I want it now. I want the, I want the, yeah, fantasy points now. All right, quick break. Back with some more chatter. We haven't even talked about Baker Mayfield Not coming yet. back to the Buccaneers. He got paid three-year deal worth up to 100 million. 50 guaranteed. Good. I mean, it's like, a lot of money. Good for you, Baker. They're really rolling it back. I they mean, they brought back Evans, brought back Baker, brought back Chase Edmonds. The, so that Rashad White's your guy. I mean, I, it's how do you not? You know, when you made it into the playoffs with with that team, I was, we'll, we'll see. I don't know. I like the, Baker. Like I, I, I think he's very capable. Uh, I also feel like this puts Tampa in a tough position of being just like in the middle of the pack. That's my. Concern. This is a Derek Carr type of signing. So, you know, it, you know, who'd you rather have, Baker Mayfield or Derek Carr? I probably lean Mayfield a little bit. Yeah, at this point, yes. But Russell Wilson, one year deal with the Steelers. Denver's going to pay him 39 million dollars to play for the Steelers. So all the all the the people getting riled up on Twitter, you know, saying no, the NFL teams won't do this to the Broncos. They won't stick them with the bill. Steelers sure did. Well, when I realized said, the way that was structured, I, like, I agreed with you. Denver, you you got this? You got you're going to pick this one up? Cool. We're going to take this quarterback and pay him absolutely nothing. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, did you have any quick reactions? I like it for George Pickens. I'll be honest. I went out and tried to trade for George Pickens in dynasty leagues, especially with rumors of Deontay Johnson yeah. being uh, potentially traded. Like I, I think George Pickens with a deep ball thrower like Russell Wilson could it's, be could be interesting. It Russ, Russ is better than what they had last year. I mean, Cortland's how many touchdowns did Cortland Sutton have? It, it, Double digits. It felt like Cortland Sutton was scoring. I think it was 40, maybe 60. <laughs> Sutton was scoring almost every single week. 10. Yeah, he finished the year with 10 touchdowns. So, you, yes, I, Pickens is far more interesting now with Russ than he was with Kenny Pickett coming back to 
compete for the starting job. Last year, Russell Wilson, fantasy-wise, had what looks to be five finishes within the top 12 on the year. Uh, he threw for 26 touchdowns and eight interceptions. It's better than what they had in Pittsburgh. Yep. And I, I, I don't like this category. Kyle put backup boys in our show doc. I don't know if I agree with that with the first name. Gardner Minshew, two-year, $25 million deal with the Las Vegas Raiders. I think he could be their starter. Do you disagree? I don't disagree, but this, it feels... I feel like I was d d demeaning. No, no, I'm saying, it to me, that it feels like the Viking situation where... Oh my gosh, they should have signed Gardner. <laughs> if there was the Vikings, I'd rather have Gardner 100 out of 100 Dude, times over Sam Darnold. The Vikings, at least reportedly, where I I don't have an inside source inside of the Minnesota Vikings organization, it feels like they just bungled this thing. Of Well, you made the point they had forever to sign. They, yeah, it, I'm saying going off the tweet, someone, in an insider, maybe it's true, maybe it's not, but they're reporting that Minnesota made a strong push late uh, you know, before the the tampering period opened up, they made a strong push to try and keep Kirk Cousins. You could have done that's a that's a PR piece of garbage. That's a if you read their if that's to me if that's my team and that's the PR they're putting out, it makes me even angrier. Well, they they want to put it out because they want you to know that they want to win. Minnesota fans, we want to win football games, and we did our best to try to win them. But we got a philosophy, and that philosophy is bigger than any player anywhere. Well, good luck, Minnesota. But I think Gardner, he's $15 million guaranteed. He he could be there with a rookie. If he ends up starting, He's he can play. But I would imagine that they're going to take someone. Well, I mean, the mustache boys is what we should call them because Aiden O'Connell, not a fan of the mustache, but he does have one. And then Gardner <laughs> Minshew, very much a fan. <laughs> Honestly, if that mustache walks into the locker room and meets – Aiden O'Connell's mustache? That's a battle that's already been won. Gardner's got the starting job. <laughs> Jameis Winston, one-year deal with the Browns to be a uh, backup. It might close the door on Flacco. It, yeah. Uh, who, who had been rumored to maybe come back. Patriots, Jacoby Brissett, one-year deal. This is He could be the starter. He could be the starter ahead of uh, probably Zappy. Drake May. Or Oh, yes. Yeah, or Jaden Daniels. Hey! Thank you. I think Thank it's, you, Al. It's a great It's a great move. Yeah. He's the perfect I mean, like Jacoby Brissett should just be he's a perfect transition backup. He's a perfect locker room backup. He's a perfect, you know, starter gets injured backup. Mac Jones is traded, by the way, to the Jaguars for a six round pick. Yep. The uh that quarterback class. Not uh not what we hoped. Not what we hoped. Uh we have baby breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> Hopefully the truthers are all dead. But Irv Smith Jr., <laughs> a one-year deal with the Kansas City Chiefs. All right. There you go. Let's go get a best chance at a Super Bowl. He's their three, right? I mean. Well, behind Gray? There's no Gray under contract. That is an interesting That, that question. might be. Maybe that's why this is happening. Let me double check here. I don't know if he is or not, but um, Irv Smith never got it done in Cincinnati or Minnesota. Tyrod Taylor backing up Aaron Rodgers with the Jets. They made it a priority to find somebody not named Zach Wilson. Yeah, Noah Gray's under contract. Kelsey's yeah, one, under contract. And Irv Smith is... One more year for Gray. Just hanging out. Uh, Marcus Mariota, one-year deal with the Commanders. Living that backup life. We are going to have a free agency. It's a, a good life. It's a good honestly, life, yeah. like. Yeah, start you, you, the initial plan is of course get the cash, get the fame, be the be the big time winning quarterback. That's a great life. Also, a great life. None of that pressure. Just cash and checks. Backup quarterback, and you're everyone's favorite. No one expects you to win when you play. If you win, you're like, oh my gosh, that guy yeah. got us a win. If you lose, it's like, yeah, we have our backup. Yeah. By the way, the fact that. Mariota and Winston both signed their one-year deals this offseason, <laughs> and they're just mirroring each other. And they, I believe, got paid the big money before they changed the first-round picks. Maybe I'm wrong about that. That might have ended with Bradford. Yes. That might have ended with yep. Bradford. But they got paid a lot of money. Sure. And now they're just kind of cruising around. 
cash and checks. So, um, you know, to me, the, the trade of Mac Jones signifies that those top three picks are going to be quarterbacks, almost guaranteed. So as somebody who would really like to see Marvin Harrison in Arizona, it gives me a lot of excitement. Because they can't – I don't think New England can blow their opportunity in the top three to take a quarterback. You just can't risk it. Yeah, I mean – And they didn't sign anybody either. They didn't go out and compete for the you know anybody that could be a starter. I think they're in a, a pretty good spot of you either – you get to take the chance or it's, you let someone else fall in love with one of the quarterbacks. Right? Cause, you're saying to trade back? Yeah. like you're, you're in a pretty primo spot to trade back. But, again, let the – the Mac Jones, Mac Jones wasn't a, a top top pick, but that crew of quarterbacks, it's it's a very difficult position to play. It's a very difficult position to draft and identify correctly. So while Caleb Williams is already crowned as a surefire thing, you know Tre Trevor Lawrence is is the the best one of that bunch, but they're. And he'll get a, a contract extension, if but there's Caleb's, still questions. If on Caleb Trevor Williams turned out to be identical to Trevor Lawrence, the Chicago Bears will feel like they failed. Yes. So yes, it's. But at the same time, this is what you do: you take yeah. your shots. I mean, the the one good thing that I agree with. I'm talking like yeah. The look at fantasy football, just yep. of of being so locked in on the quarterbacks. It's it's tough. The one great thing Kime did in Arizona was say goodbye to Josh Rosen instantly and just spend another top 10 pick to yep. take a quarterback. You got to keep doing it. So I'm going to, I'm going to press pause there. We have a winners and losers episode. That's going to come up too, where we break down. Like if you didn't get enough, talk about one specific player, we're going to talk about the implications uh, for all of these moves. And then we'll get into wide receivers and tight ends, which are far less flashy of uh, transactions of to talk about a lot of re-signs. We'll get into that on Thursday. But, um, I mean, Mike, you got your dream I, right in the middle of the show. That's right. I did it. Derrick Henry, you willed that. That that was not going to happen without you. Yeah. So, fantasy football community, you are welcome. I think that there, there's probably – he was probably sitting there in the room, probably trying to decide between a few teams, browsing the internet. Yeah, he saw my tweet. Saw your tweet. Yeah. And said, you know what? This Mike guy – He really believes he's in me. He's got a point. He believes in me. <laughs> he knows where my best home would be in Baltimore. Oh, man. Also, that team is going to be good. So many touchdowns for Derrick Henry. He stays healthy. Oh, yeah. Just, I can say that about <laughs> your team, too. All righty. <laughs> That'll do it for today. Make sure you watch the show, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Goodbye Good for now. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.